Hey everyone, today I want to talk about auto sinkless catfish. Now if you've been watching the channel for way too long, you'll know over seven years ago I did a shaky cell phone camera video in the store. Pants, they will clean, uh, you know, glass to like... Now I've got so much more information. I've been to Peru, I've collected them, I've just touched more of them physically, right? Uh, so I want to take you guys through that process of maybe why I think they might be sensitive or hard to take care of and just explain the journey of how a fish goes from the wild and my experiences there all the way to the home aquarium. So obviously it starts in the wild, you know, where I find that they congregate is on wood and I'll get into that a little bit later, but the way we were catching them is you kind of lift up a piece of wood, you bring a net underneath, they would fall into it, you know, giant autos, zebra autos, normal autos, all of that uh, would be there. Now I'm sure there's plenty of others on rocks and other surfaces around that we just weren't catching from, but the fact that they did congregate so much on wood leads me to believe they uh, either feel safe there or I think they're actually getting a food source there. And so as wood rots or as in your aquarium it starts rotting and then you get biofilm that grows on there that they can eat and algaes and it's kind of a collection point for microorganisms and all of that. So I believe that that is one of the best things we can do to add to an aquarium at home as a piece of wood so that it starts that process. That's what I learned from the wild basically is they're in big numbers and that they congregate towards wood. They usually have tannins in the water, uh, which I haven't found that to be make or break it for any species of fish that I have played with, but um, just you know that note out there. What I really want to talk about today and the whole reason I'm making this video is because when I was at the exporters, right? Uh, I got to see, I'd never seen them sorting autosynclus and I, I'd seen them there but I wasn't seeing them being handled at multiple places. And, and you know, the one clip you can see they're basically in vats of, you know, I didn't count them, but my estimation is a couple hundred. And they're counting them into groups of like 25 into these little containers. And some of the containers had blue water, which would have been methylene blue to prevent fungus. And some hadn't been turned blue yet. There was tens of thousands of autosynclus here. There's so many of them, right? And they need to break them down into smaller countable sizes that they can ship. So maybe that denomination is 25 or, or whatever it is. I mean, we can count in the video here and actually see what they were putting in there. But uh, this is how they were storing them. And the, the storing of them was in, well, some places was wooden boxes. That's how they'd be collected. We actually saw some of this on the river while we were collecting fish. You'd see them, they were kind of a wooden box with a plastic liner. And you'd put fish in there and you could stack them up. So the next box would keep the other ones from jumping. And that's how you would do it. And they might be in there for days and just changing the water, right? Well, they finally make it to uh, an exporter and they need to be gone through if there was any bycatch. So anything that wasn't autosynclus, it gets removed. If there was any deaths, that would get removed. I, to be fair, I didn't see very many deaths of autos at all at this point. So they kind of get gone through and at this one location, they were putting them into smaller containers. My guess was to ship them out sooner, but nevertheless, they look pretty good. Now, the one thing that I thought was kind of missing from these uh, exporters was food. The only foods that I actually saw there were uh, live tube effects worms. And that was mostly for like stingrays and other stuff. I actually don't believe much food was actually getting to these fish at all. And that might be that maybe they're leaving in a week and they're just fasting and, and that process. I, I suspect some fish were staying there longer than a week, but I don't know the process uh, through and through outside of any food they were putting in, which didn't look to be much at all, there wasn't really a lot of algae, there wasn't a lot of light, and so they had already started their fast, right? So if we imagine that someone had to collect these fish, and maybe they collected for three or four days, and then they had to go down the river for a day or two, they might have been uh, out of the water, out of the wild, so to speak, for about a week or so, right? And they're going to be at a wholesaler's, and maybe that wholesale process is a week, now, there's always going to be leeway here because maybe they landed and shipped the next day. Maybe they didn't ship for two weeks. What usually happens in this situation is maybe 10,000 of them come in and then every week 4,000 of them go out or 5,000 go out based on sales, right? So I, I think there's a fluid process here. They've gone basically about two weeks without eating at kind of a minimum in my estimation. If you're in the United States or wherever in the world, they're going to arrive at a wholesaler. This is where a pet store like myself would buy the fish from. They're going to get much larger shipments of them because they're going to dis distribute them to a bunch of different stores. So again, in wholesale facilities, normally you'll see 500 or 1,000 in one aquarium. There'll be no algae. Depending on the level of wholesaler and how good they are, uh, they'll be feeding them. 
every wholesaler claims that they feed fish, but that's not always 100% true. And, and there's this spectrum, right? If you throw in, you know, I've got some Reese's Pieces right here. If I throw in a Reese, one Reese's Pieces in the week, I'm feeding fish, right? But then there's also wholesalers that actually feed every day, and that makes a huge difference. In my opinion, more effort could be going into auto sinkless in captivity in wholesalers because they, they, for me, they come in pretty skinny a lot of times. Now, this same batch of, let's say, a couple thousand or more auto sinkless that are at a wholesaler, that does not move in a day or two typically. Typically, that's going to be more like maybe three or four weeks worth of sales. In a perfect world, maybe a store like myself would get auto sinkless in three weeks from the wild all the way to my store in three weeks, wouldn't have lost too much weight. Now, if it's towards the end of that though, now it's at more like six weeks, they can start getting pretty skinny. This is where it comes down to the store level and I think the biggest impact can be made because I'm not sure that I can convince wholesalers, they already know they need to be doing it and maybe they're just not. At the store level, if you own a store or you know, thinking about owning one or maybe you just have a good relationship with your store owner, I do think it's very important to get some food in there. Get one, get a piece of driftwood in there. That's something we're actually going to add to our routine of just, it can't hurt. And so I'm going to add it in. But we use a lot of rapashi foods. You know, sometimes we'll blanch zucchini. We'll try algae wafers. Not every auto sinkless eats the same thing. The biggest thing that we do, and this is hard and not feasible for everybody, but we purposely grow algae in an aquarium when we're going to bring them in. Sometimes this looks like, okay, we're looking for the most algae grown aquarium that we have in the store. We're going to put them there in quarantine. So they've got a lot of food to eat because that's one of the biggest problems we find they have. They get that first snack in the first day or so, and then you got to start feeding and maybe it's green beans out of the can. Maybe it's uh, rapashi, maybe it's or blanching zucchini. I don't really like cucumber because it's a little mushy, but getting food into them, that is the important part. Getting food into them and making sure that they're healthy. And then our goal is actually to sell them in that following week. So by the time that you're buying an auto sinkless from us, it might be out of the wild uh, about two months. And so we try to bring in batches more of like 50 and we intentionally grow that algae to give them that first start to get that, that gut kind of going again where food's moving through it, passing through it at your home, right? So now we finally want to get this fish home to you. We want to go the same route. We want to have algae for them, maybe a piece of wood, maybe a little bit of food from time to time. But I think the biggest things we can do as an aquarist is not overstock. This 800 gallon aquarium right here does have auto sinkless. It has six. 800 gallons has six of them. There's still a little bit of algae they haven't quite got to and it's been months, right? But I would rather have an unlimited buffet than them run out of food two days later, right? And so a lot of times people might buy six of these for their 30 gallon aquarium. It's really gonna be hard to keep them well fed and not lose them over time. And over time means you might lose them over the course of six, eight, ten months where you're like, oh, I just lost one, and two months later you lose another one. It's because there's not quite enough food. That's really what it comes down to. Now, I know this gets into territory of like, but at the beginning of the video you said they want to be in big groups. That's definitely true. But we have to find this balance between, oh, I have a hundred of them and they're starving to death, or I have two and they're super fat and now they're breeding and making a couple more. Like, somewhere between those two is the right for your tank and that's going to depend on well how much algae are you growing like I grow a lot of algae because I have a skylight right above you know and during the summer lots of algae during the winter not as much algae but still algae right I try to match the animal to the need and they seem to be very happy even in smaller numbers now I try not to do just one sometimes I've, I have ended up with just one in an aquarium before though where I tried three in a 30 gallon aquarium and over the course of four or five years I'm down to one and it's just nice and plump and healthy and from what I can see as a human looks to be happy. Now obviously I don't speak the language but look to be enjoying life with the live bears it lived with and I didn't change that. So as far as keeping them in your home aquarium though because maybe that's why you're watching the video up to this point I like them in a mid 70s temperature, you know, it can be anywhere from really anywhere from about 68 degrees to probably about 80, but I like to keep them at 74, 75, somewhere in there, you know. As far as pH goes, I've kept them in a wide variety before. In the sevens, I would say, that's, I need to adopt that, in the sevens, because that's, that's right for so many fish. Have other fish in the aquarium and be feeding them 
And every once in a while making that, well, yeah, there's a, they're probably going to like Rapashi. They're probably going to like this. And not try to feed them all the time because you can foul the water if you're just like, I haven't seen them eat. So if you lower the lighting down a little bit, make it a little more dim because remember, they're a wild caught animal. They come from very tan and water. It's not super bright all the time. They're going to feel more comfortable to come out and eat. If you have a lot of plant cover, that's going to replicate kind of roots and wood and, and their safety that they're uh, used to. And that's going to make them want to eat a little more. The last trick I'll give you is uh, with rapashi food, if you really are trying to maybe grow algae eaters or just fish that like to graze, is you can get like a rock or a piece of wood and you pull it out of your aquarium, mix up some rapashi and you got to boil that with water in the microwave or however you're going to pull that off. Then you grab like a little paintbrush or you don't even have to grab a paintbrush but like a spoon. While it's still runny, you get some dollops on it and you kind of paint it and smooth it on to the wood or rock. Let that sit out for a couple of minutes so it it kind of solidifies and, and becomes one with it. Then you can put that back in the aquarium. You have this nice big surface. Remember how we talked about that wood that, you know, kind of had all this stuff for a fish to go on and eat? Well, now we've basically replicated that by smearing it all over, getting in the nooks and crannies and all of that. A lot of autos can come, one here, one here, one there, one there, and they're all eating in their own time. You can put some on the underside because that's a lot of times where they'd want to eat is you've got this overhang of wood, there's food under here. They're just latched underneath. That's how we were catching them and they're eating. So I hope you've kind of enjoyed this trip from all the way in the wild to kind of a home aquarium and my take on why I think they might be a little more sensitive and that is they're not being fed enough. On one side that keeps the fish healthy or it keeps it cheap but it doesn't necessarily keep it healthy and so I think our job once we do get them in our possession is to reverse that as much as we can because once they do settle in, they really start eating algae really fast. And so I've definitely seen people that buy three a week later. They're not doing the job. I need a bunch more. Like, no, 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 they need to settle in. So give them plenty of time. I would say at least six weeks before you're really thinking about buying more algae eaters to handle that. Now, they do like to eat on flat surfaces. So they mostly focus on diatom algae. Um, so that would be brown and green algae you see on flat surfaces and not hair algae. They're not, they're not equipped for that. They've got that little sucker mouth. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.